to our morning worship service this morning. I'd like to lift up a few announcements for you. Um, following, or this Wednesday will be our annual Geddes Community Gathering at the American Legion and if you haven't signed up, make sure you sign up for that. And if you can't make anything, at least come and eat. Uh, we serve it from 5 to 7 and so for you to bring a hot dish, salad, dessert, I invite you to bring a friend. Uh, this, is a, this is what a little reminder is. You can invite a friend to come or Say, why don't you come and eat? And time of time of fellowship for that. So please do that this Wednesday. Um, next Sunday will be our charge conference with our district superintendent, Roger Sparb. He will be preaching, so if you want to hear a good sermon, uh, come next Sunday. He's a very good preacher. Um, the mitten tree is up, so if you'd like to start giving some, buy some mittens, scarves, hats for... At the Southeast Pier, uh, the tree's up, so please uh, give for that. Um, let's see. November, um, or December 11th is a Christmas service, so we hope to uh, invite the kids to be part of Sunday School on the next few Sundays. Uh, November 27th, we will not have Sunday School, but uh, bring your kids to Sunday School so we can kind of give them their part and and I know Confirmation Kids will be helping out with the Chrismon service December 11th. All right, are there any other announcements this morning? And then with our charge conference, we'll follow right after our worship service, so we'll have a time of quick fellowship, and Roger will start the meeting shortly after that, and that's open to everyone. You will... So right after health, or right during worship, we'll go downstairs and grab our food, and when Roger's ready, we'll start our charge conference. So, all right, let's take a moment to stand and greet each other in the spirit of Christ this morning. I'd like to welcome our YouTube residents to our worship service. I am Wayne Huber, pastor of the Geddes United Methodist Church. We welcome you, and if you're my sermon today is entitled, What Kind of a King?, which is based on Luke 23, verses 33 through 43. And if you're in the guest area, we welcome you to our morning worship service, which is at 10 o'clock. May God bless you. Our beautiful quilt up here we'll give away during our community supper. So uh, we'll do the same thing. I want to thank the ladies for making that. And then the food pantry, I want to say thank you for those that helped donate the food for that. And what I would like to do is just take a blessing and bless both of those uh, items this morning. So would you pray with me? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for all the volunteers that help bless these ministries. And Lord, I cannot say enough about their dedication and their caring nature. They are truly making a difference in someone's lives by offering hope through provision and prayer. Lord, bless now this food for the food pantry, for those people that will receive it. Continue to bless the Helping Hands and Platt and the Lake Andes food pantries as it grows. 
And we also are truly blessed with the volunteers that help serving others. Our volunteers are always offered to pray for those who need to be prayed with. And Lord, as Jesus says in the scripture, when do we do this? And Jesus says, when you did unto one of my brothers and sisters, you did unto me. And bless now this quilt that may warm those uh, this winter when it's cold and remembering of your love around them. And bless all this in Jesus' name. join me in the call to worship. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Worthy is Christ who has ransomed us by his blood for every tribe and tongue and nation and made his people a kingdom and priest to our God. Please remain standing for the hymn of praise number 157, Jesus Showering.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, it is your will to restore all things to Christ, whom you have anointed priest forever and ruler of creation. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united under the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord, now open our hearts and our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. That as the scriptures are read, your word is proclaimed. We may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our first scripture lesson comes from Jeremiah 23, 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, concerning, therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord. That when I will rise up from David and a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Okay, I will now read the act of praise. Called the Canticle of Zechariah on page 208. Please read responsibly. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to set the chosen people free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. To show mercy to our forebears and to remember the holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham. To set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship without fear, holy and righteous in the Lord's sight. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way. To give and ask the Lord of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in our hearts. Our next scripture lesson comes from Colossians 1, 11 through 20. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things 
have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of, of his cross. And if you would please stand for the hymn of preparation beneath the cross of Jesus, uh, number 297. Please remain standing for the gospel lesson, which is Luke 23, 33 through 43. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And he cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God. He is the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom, he replied. Jesus replied, 
Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord.
Next in two weeks, we'll be celebrating Advent already. Next week will be called Really Christ the King Sunday, but since our district superintendent is preaching next Sunday, I decided to preach on Christ the King or Christ the Reign Sunday. We have completed the church calendar. We've seen a baby born in a manger to two peasant people as they were traveling. We've seen a baby born in a manger. We've seen shepherds coming. Wise men came and brought gifts. Then we saw them going to Egypt for a while, and then going back home to Nazareth. We've seen Jesus when he was 12 years old and going to the temple with his family. We've seen his baptism, his temptation, and his ministry. We see when he called 12 men to be disciples. And then we've seen his passion and his death and his resurrection. And then we see the sending of the Holy Spirit on the ministry of the church. And it's fitting then on this Sunday to declare God in Christ as ruler of all. We declare today that Jesus is the King and that the fulfillment of Jesus' work is that he lives and he reigns with God and Holy Spirit now and forevermore. But yet do you know why we call Jesus King? Do we even get it at all? And if you look at the back of Jesus' ministry, in his life and ministry of Jesus, a lot of people never got who Jesus was. King Herod felt threatened by his birth. He sent wise men to find the baby and then his plot to have the baby killed. But when the wise men failed to return and his scheme was frustrated, he killed innocent children in hopes of saving his kingship for his sons. So King Herod didn't get it. Judas, the disciples, the Zelot, didn't get it either. He tried of portraying Jesus as to become an earthly ruler. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, all of those people didn't get who Jesus was. Now at the cross, when Jesus was dying, remember the two criminals up there? But when Jesus was dying, the soldiers even mocked him with language of temptation, kind of like the temptation story. And then we have those criminals that were on the cross with Jesus, hanging there. And one of those criminals hanging there wanted Jesus to be saved from physical death. And these and numerous others take the human ideal of kingships and applies them to Jesus. King Jesus can, can give me anything. King Jesus is all-powerful, and I'm, I'm glad he's my friend. Other people will say as far as, unquote, I will reign with him. People now, try now, as they did then, to use Jesus to get what they want. I love it when people say, I have Jesus in my heart, but they live their old ways. Because when you have Jesus in your heart, you do things that are uncomfortable, things that you rather not do. Jesus' kingship has nothing to do with our glory has everything to do with the cross. Now, one of the other criminals that was on the cross with Jesus got it. He got who Jesus was and he bought the other criminal of asking to be saved from physical death. You see, this other criminal who knew who 
knew who he had no claim on life, much less any ambition for glory, saw King Jesus for who he was. He knew Jesus was king. Why? Because he had lost everything so the world was no longer with him. You see, this criminal got it. When Jesus forgave those people that were killing him. Remember verse uh, 34, when Jesus says, Forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. You see, a real king has the power to pardon. And over and over again, Jesus was told to save himself. But the king, but as a king of death on the cross, was Jesus' way of pronouncing salvation to others. Jesus, or Christ the King, is Jesus on the cross. And the kingdoms of God and the kingdoms of forgiveness, the kingdom of reconciliation, and the kingdom of love that refuse to seek self. Do our lives reflect more around us or of other people in our lives? Do we seek first what is best for us or do we give up ourselves for the sake of others and for the sake of the kingdom? Do we reflect an an attitude of forgiveness to those that might hurt us? Do we leap ahead to create peace and reconciliation? Especially with people that are different than you and I. My question is, do you know King Jesus? Do you want King Jesus in your hearts today? It's your decision. Let's pray. Almighty God, who has given your Son, Christ Jesus, to reign over all people and nations and language should serve him. Make us loyal followers of our living Lord that we may always hear his word, to follow his teaching, and to live in his spirit. And hasten the day when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to your eternal glory. Our hymn of response is number 332, I think. 327, excuse me, 327. Crown him with many crowns. You may remain seated as we sing this hymn.
turn now into our affirmation of faith, our creed, found on page 884, the Korean faith. Will you stand for evil, please? And let us unite in this historic confession of our Christian faith. We believe in one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God presence with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the Word of God, contained in the Old and New Testaments, as the sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the Church, those who are united in the living Lord, for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God, as divine will realized in human society, and in the family of God, where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. Not then let us go in God in prayer then. God of our shepherd king, you have promised a reign where we will no longer feel afraid or be dismayed. Gather us now and lead us home at last. We give thanks to you for rescued us and transfer us into the kingdom of your beloved son to whom and for whom all earthly powers was created. And we praise you for sending Jesus, who left his throne in glory to be called King by those who honor him with branches, by those who gave him a crown of thorns. Make us strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And we pray for all who this day calls on Jesus to hear their cries. For he is the king like no other, a king who listens all day long. He breaks the power of oppression and calls his saints from everywhere. And no one works like him. Teach us now to embrace all the people in his name, to nurture his justice in the world, and give us grace to serve his endless reign, that all people may be reconciled to God, through Christ our head, who makes peace by the blood of the cross. 
And gracious God, we're just grateful to have you in our lives. Lord, we want to lift up those people that are hurting. We want to lift up those people that have maybe some illness that controls their lives. People out there that are alone, that figure they have no friends. We want to lift up those especially that are on the street corners. No place to call home. And Lord, we ask you to heal this nation, this country, as so much turmoil has gone on for the past few months, especially after, before and after the election. Lord, may there be peace. And maybe it might start with us. And the people know that you are the king of our lives. And the king of their lives. And Lord, we just ask you to be with those going through these riots, those are people are being killed. That for those families that have lost loved ones. And Lord, be with us this Wednesday as we come together as a community to share in time of food and fellowship and a time of togetherness. And know that you will be there with us. And you'll be there after we leave and you'll be with us wherever we are. Bless this church. Bless the ministries of this church. And Lord, we want to lift up also those that are in the nursing home and those that are shut in and those that are in the hospital. Pray for those that are going to have surgery this week that you hear the hand be upon them, calm their fears. Be with those that are recuperating from surgery. And Lord, be with the good Samaritans that help these people, whether it's in the nursing home or hospital or at home. And bless each one of us as we give you thanks. And we pray this all in Jesus' name as we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And let us now confess our sins to God and to one another. Please join me in our prayer confession that's found in your bulletin this morning. And let us pray. O holy and merciful God, we confess that we have not always taken upon ourselves the yoke of obedience, nor been willing to see and to do your perfect will. You have not loved you with all of our heart and mind and soul and strength. Neither have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. You have called us into the need of our sisters and brothers, and we have passed unheeding on our way. In the pride of our hearts, in our unwillingness to repent, we have turned away from the cross of Christ, and we have grieved your Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a message that we have heard from God and proclaimed to you, that God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, the Son, cleanses us from all of our sins. May the mighty God, who causes light to shine out of darkness, shine in our hearts cleansing us from all of our sins, 
and restoring us to the light of the knowledge of God's glory. In the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. I did forget to mention that um, next Sunday, what I'd like to do is have a little choir before uh, the sing uh, for Enjoy next Sunday. So if you're interested in singing, come a little early next Sunday, and we'll do a, a quick praise song before the worship starts. So if you'd like to come a little bit earlier, and we'll probably do the song uh, Give Thanks, probably. So if you'd like to sing uh, next Sunday, just come a little bit earlier, and we'll tell you what we're going to be doing. So. Now I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward as we give now our tithes and offerings. Thanks be to God. 